Everybody. Welcome back to the Graphic Multiverse. I'm Paul, joined with Angela. Hi. <laughs> Rob. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> and Juan, welcome back to the show. What's up? <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's a nice little uh, throwback. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I must have throwback. watched that, that Super Friends What's Up cartoon like 700 oh. times. <laughs> It's I, still never time, not funny. The first time I saw that I was with you while we were filming yeah. um, Perceptions of Reality. Degeneration, as it was later called. Yes. Wow. Yeah. For all that you was, keep that was in the era of all those, like, the G.I. Joe dubs and stuff, too. Oh, uh-huh. yeah. 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 The PSAs. Uh, hey, so kid, good. I'm a computer. Stop I'm all computer. the downloading. <laughs> that, that's probably one of my favorites. Stop oh, all the downloading. It's great. Get off my like. Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, I think that was a great way to open because uh, speaking of throwback, today we got a Matrix trailer. We did. Which, oh, um, hell yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty excited to dive in a little bit because, um, uh, yeah, I was a little, um, what's the word I'm looking for? I guess cautiously optimistic because it's not a, uh, a Wachowski siblings production it's just lana wachowski right who's doing this yeah, one yeah mm-hmm. and that's that's fine that's all of right it's, it's, yeah. it, you know they listen they, you can have paul without created John. the whole universe yeah. you know they know what all the rules are what the ins and outs are what can and can't be done they know all the ergos and vis-a-vis so <laughs> they got it covered i'm yeah. i'm i have full confidence just off that that's the that's the other thing it's the first trailer like we'll we'll get another trailer closer oh, yeah. to the release, you know. So there's there's mystery for a reason. There's questions Ooh. that you're gonna have for a reason. I was gonna say I actually thought that was a pretty good trailer. It was a great great opening. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. I, I, my interest. I watched it at the end. I was like, that was cool. And I was like, I have no idea what happened at the end of the Matrix movies. <laughs> I don't remember either. Same because I, I all I remember I loved the first one, and I remember the second one was jarring like jarring that's the only way to describe yeah, it yeah it was like deeply like it was troubling and i was just like oh like it was it was very because that was the one with the um the 10 minute like sex scene and the and the part dance the party. rave yeah, yeah that's right the okay rave yeah so that one that People one people of zion was yeah. definitely yeah. upsetting um and and then the third one i think i was still in shell shock from the second one that like wasn't the third one where they had like the agent smith pile that, that was, was the second. No, one. that's in the second one. Yeah. Okay. The so, burly so I think the third one I probably just like blocked. All out. I remember from the end of the trilogy was Neo in front of a glowing robot head thing. Mm-hmm. That's all I remembered. I remember the first yeah. Matrix movie very well, and I, I love remember that movie. Colonel Sanders showing up. Yeah. The, the architect. architect. The third, okay. Yeah. 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 So I remember yeah. Colonel Sanders, and um, but beyond that, I remember the Oracle sitting on a bench. Mm-hmm. But that's about it. And I haven't like gone back to watch them. Well, was I, that the cake one? The, when she eats no, the cake? The, that was the second one. Okay, so the, the second the, one was the one that really Yeah, with the with the, with the Mar- <laughs> was it the Merovingian? That yeah, the Merovingian eating yeah. cake. Yeah, that's in the second one. Oh, no, so that's so in the, the second third, one was what did that. That's yeah. in the third one. She eats the cake in the third one. In orgasm. The Mer- the, yeah, the Merovingian. Yeah. Okay, mm-hmm. okay. So that is the third one. Okay. That's the third one. That's at what the was start the one with the, the albino one. twins with the dreadlocks? The sec- That's in the second, second one. one. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> can ghosts. we just like fix this episode? Just be like, okay, which which one <laughs> was it? Was it the second or the third one? You, you got the right guy on here for that because <laughs> remember- I'm no bullshit. I've rewatched all three of those movies at least six, seven times. Okay, like, I, I I watched the first one like a I, bunch of times. The second two and three I only saw once in the theater. The, the first one was a very important film in my life. It was one of three movies in the year of 1999 that kind of changed the way I looked at movies. I was friends with you when that movie came out. I remember yeah. you, like, I remember we had, like, a big discussion about it at the ICA. Because I remember mm-hmm. having, um, was it Robert Patton Sproul was there? Yep. He, uh, and his, I guess his parents uh, are actors. And I remember taking an acting class with his mom. And she was talking about, 
the matrix it's just about how just the, the mixture of you know um like the cyberpunk and kung fu and like um you know with like the old you know kind of storytelling of prophecy and it was just how, right. how much it was of it was a nice blend and my contribution was like oh, i like the part when you know, the, he dodged the bullets <laughs> <laughs> That was awesome. No, because I yeah. feel like The Matrix came out. That was the same year that Equilibrium came out. And The Matrix, obviously, was the one that like, stole the show. Yeah. Real talk, and I didn't see Equilibrium for like four years. After same. That. Like, and when I, I finally no saw idea. Equilibrium, I was like, holy shit, this is incredible. Because it's basically like Fahrenheit 451 and like yes. 1984 in like, yeah. it, I, I remember like combined. And it's so with, good. With Gun Kata. Okay, I was gonna ask you that. Gun Kata, gun yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. I've seen that like once. Um, Christian so Bale good. in that. Yep, yep. And so is Sean Bean. And Steen Bean is in it. Yeah. <laughs> and Tay Diggs. Um, Tay Diggs. And that's right. Tay that's right. Diggs. Mm-hmm. Um, but no, but I was telling Juan before we were recording that I actually have a theory about why I had a hard time with the second and third movies, um, because. I remember buying the first one. I was like, I'm only buying the first one. I'm gonna pretend the other two don't exist. And uh, one talked me back into watching two and three, and I had a much better appreciation for it. And I think the reason why I had such a hard time was that, what was it, the, the Reloaded, was that like 2002, 2003, mm-hmm. right? It was 2002. It came out, I want to say it was 2000. When did... Um, they came out back to back, right? Like one year after the other? It was like, yeah. I thought it was yeah, like six months apart. One came out like when... 2002 and 2003? Return of the... Revenge of the Sith came out that same year. 2005. It came out that long. Well, I think it was around maybe, maybe, um, or maybe Attack of the Clones by using the internet. Yeah, maybe Attack of the Clones. It it came out the year that one of the sequels for the prequels did. Yeah, Yeah, I remember being really excited. Was 2003. 2003. Okay. So I'm in high school, right? I just graduated, and my attention spans a little limited. So that scene with the architect, I remember like really trying hard to follow along and only probably catching maybe like 50% of what they were saying. And I think that because being in high school and not working, didn't really have the funds to, you know, uh, have a second viewing. And so, and I think like, because I just hadn't really like thought about it, like, and then when the third one came out, I didn't have a lot, I didn't have a good memory of what happened in the second one other than like well uh bane not the batman villain has Mm -hmm. smith inside of him he's out of the machine neo he's got to make a choice uh you know save zion trinity he chooses trinity the machines are mad about it i think i don't know why now he can stop the sentinels outside of the machine like it was super like so i think i just didn't have the attention or the attention span to like fully appreciate what they were is it the second or the third one when he puts his hand in trinity's chest that's right that's that's in the second one yeah okay that's at the end of the second one yeah Yeah. like the the, running theme yeah to the what okay so i need to re-watch those which i totally will watch again it's because I, uh, like I said, much more, a better appreciation for it. And I didn't realize because I bought, when I bought the second and third one, it comes with the, um, the MTV movie awards spoof they did mm-hmm. with Will Ferrell as the architect. Oh my God. I it's haven't so seen funny. that since 2003 it's and so I funny. fucking laughed so my good. ass. I was like, I am the architect, but you can call me Larry. Yeah, like, yeah. And when he gets all mad at Neo, I will architect a world of pain on your candy asses. <laughs> Visa yeah, be ergo. <laughs> it's great. Yeah. No, that those movies are really well done. And the inspiration comes out of a comic called The Invisibles, which truth be told, I haven't dived into yet. It's one of the few high concept Grant Morrison things I haven't jumped into, but a lot of the same concepts in the movie about like data mining humans for energy and for information and for basically power of this machine world is stuff that's already been touched on in other places but part of why i love these movies and just the wachowskis in general is their influences are kind of written on their sleeve even stuff that they don't direct has their blueprint that's yeah undeniably theirs um like assassins like you can it sounds like a wachowski movie even though it's not directed by the wachowskis um 
yeah, I mean, these movies, I really like them. I could I could dive into it and, and talk about it for a while, but I'll say this, a big turnoff for a lot of people was that conversation with the architect. And it wasn't until my second or third viewing of Reloaded that it finally clicked for me. And I was like, that's what he was saying. Did like, you- I got bits and pieces of what yeah. he was saying each time I watched it. But when it when you see the, the grand picture of what he's actually telling Neo and the choice that he's presenting with, Right. And the choice that Neo then makes. And why is it totally informs the way the architect behaves and the conversation that the architect has with the Oracle in the third movie. And if you're thinking about this in the truest form that these are programs, that's why they started off. The third movie starts off with like that father who's talking to Neo in the train station. Yeah. He's like, yeah, but you know, this is your daughter, but it's a program. Like, how can you love your daughter? Like that conversation also yeah. means more the more you watch it because all of these things in the matrix and even outside the matrix are just ones and zeros. Yeah. You know, everything is programmable, rewritable. That's what makes Smith dangerous. That's mm-hmm. why him and Neo are opposites. And that's why the Oracle and the architect are opposites, but they, you know, it's a yin yang. They need each right. other. Yeah. The architect scene, what I think what really clicked for me was subtitles. I had yeah. to like hear it and read yeah. it. Yeah, and yeah. I had to like pause <laughs> and like think like, okay, so what he's saying is like, if I'm going to break it down, like I, I have to explain this to a four-year-old, like this is mm-hmm. what they're talking about, you know, and right. then rewind, start from the beginning, like, uh, okay, okay, right. this is why. You know, and I did like the idea that there were other iterations, like there have been other ones, you know, and, yes. and I like talking him talking about, well, the first one was a paradise and right. uh, you guys rejected. Then the next one yeah. uh, was like, was a nightmare because, you know, reflecting your, I think, how does he put it like grotesquities or something like that? Right, right. And, 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 and once again, I was frustrated by failure. Right, uh, and right. uh, so, yeah, but I love that, um, that like, that the Matrix needs zion and like needs like a neo because it's all it's all it's all it's all connected. cyclical yeah yeah it's i'm gonna all, have to go back and watch it because like you guys talking about it now i'm like glazing over and i'm it, like it's, what the fuck are you about? but that's it's what the new lot, one is probably it's a right? like higher it's a concept cycle, yeah it seems like yeah that, that that's that that was the point of the architect's like speech to him he's like look man i've done this shit before i've had this conversation with other versions of you every time i have this conversation this is the choice i give them option a or option b they always go with option a because option b means we're going to annihilate you right and basically at the end of the second movie neo's like fuck you i'm going with option b and he goes with option b and the dude's like wait a minute none of these guys have ever called my bluff before right what the right fuck exactly are we, gonna we, do? we don't really have a contingency and for it, this right and it basically feeds into the whole conversation that he has at the at the end of the third one where he basically goes to the mainframe and yeah. has that conversation with the mainframe like it's a direct result of him choosing option b yeah uh, yeah and, once i understood that i liked the movies a lot more even taking that out of it the highway chase in the second movie oh phenomenal by far and away one of the greatest things ever put to film They did that shit on actual highways in Australia. And it is incredible. Like the amount of planning, the amount of stunt driving, the amount of coordination taken for that. That scene is like 45 minutes long. Yeah. It is a masterpiece from beginning to end. And being when Neo swoops in and saves everybody. Say what you will about the CG. Yeah, it's a little cheesy, whatever doesn't always hold up right they're in a computer they're in the matrix i don't care i don't need it to be fully rendered i don't need to see the photo realistic forming out of the pores on their head like i love having a ps4 but some shit is too much you know what i mean like (laughs) give me the dude in eight bits and suspenders and let me just have him jump on blocks and things okay like (laughs) i'm not complicated right um so that all of that being said um, I'm really looking forward to the fourth one because um, I, so if you're like a nerd like me and like, let's do the breakdown of like the trailers, like there's an actual clip of um, Neo with like all of those like smaller Sentinels 
Mm-hmm. And um, he's got his eyes burned. So it's almost like they're taking yeah. the body from the third one. Yep. Rebooting it. But anyway, it looks good. And, well, it's and called I, Resurrections. Yeah. So, I mean, there's that. That's you know, true. Possible spoiler in the right. name. Um, but we'll definitely do a Matrix episode because I know we can do this all day, as Cap would say. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. But let's dive into the heart of this episode, uh, which is our review of Shang-Chi and the oh, Legend yeah. of the Ten Rings. Um, this was my first hour, first time back in theaters since the lockdown. Mm-hmm. And, first uh, movie I've seen in theaters since us, um, Birds of Prey. Nice. Yeah. Nice final movie to go, go out on and then come back in on. That's, uh, that's Absolutely. Good. Absolutely. Good. Yeah. Absolutely. So, an initial reactions. What? 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 What do we? What was the uh, main takeaway from Shang? Shang. I freaking I loved it. I was like ready. I, you know, I'm gonna be honest. Like, I was ready to just kind of like, I was like, okay, Angela, take off your rose-colored glasses, and you have to look at this like critically because you know this is a this is a, a Asian American like character you know, are they, you know, you got to be careful because there's been so many, I, I don't know, I, there's been so much violence against, like, Asian Americans and, like, mm-hmm. and, and I'm, like, okay, like, like, I'm, I, like, I gotta be, I gotta be honest with this, you know, and, like, and as you said, Paul, looking over at my facial expressions throughout the entire movie, it yeah, was just dude. like magic. I, see, I need to see whimsy. it again because so much of, of my viewing experience was looking at Angela just being like. <laughs> <laughs> I like loved it so freaking much. Well, I'm such a huge fan of like Kung Fu movies and like I, I love Shaw's Brothers movies. I love like all of that stuff. So it's just like watching it was just so it it just. Oh my god! Because they did, they did the cheesiness of like Mm -hmm. Hong Kong cinema. They even did that, like with like just it was like a big warm hug. It was just like they just gave me a huge hug, and I felt so good. And I hope, I hope my rant just now made sense because oh totally, it felt so good. Yeah, well, (laughs) don't watch that movie. (laughs) And I thought it was nice too that you know they had Brad, uh, they had Brad Allen like be like the, the the head like stunt coordinator for this movie and brad allen used to roll with a um kind of underground um uh chinese uh martial artist uh jackie chan you know and and i know well, they they yeah, i know that, that they yeah they um you should check them out up and coming uh mm-hmm. but yeah i mean a lot of a, like a lot of his like tech techniques like you're kind of using like the jacket on the bus and Mm -hmm. you know like a lot of that was from that uh from his style and that's why they kind of gave him the nice little tribute at the end because i guess he had passed away um but i know like he he was very influential in having kind of that style of um fighting in there which the fight scenes were phenomenal oh yeah fight scenes were superb i just loved how like the first it was like a four or five minutes into the movie and i was just like damn marvel's just making all these americans read subtitles this is bold i like it same Because <laughs> the first like 10 minutes of that movie's not in english at all no, it's right. all subtitles and i was like hell yeah well you know what i love like a marvel movie it like yeah. it finally felt different right <laughs> I, what i liked about this too is that we have heard so much well maybe not so much but uh we have had explanations of the history of the mandarin and the ten rings like you know you had um uh raza uh talking about it in the first iron man movie and we talked about genghis khan and you Mm -hmm. know uh and uh and uh in the all hail the king uh marvel short um you know you, you had that interviewer talking to ben kingsley about um what what the mandarin means to history and his inspiration right. and all that so it was cool to finally see all of that in action um and i love the interpretation of the rings like mm. not just like on his fingers they're like wrist yeah bracelets. i was good with that 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 was that was solid like that it, was you know, awesome is what it was marvel to to give us something that it's like real talk in the comics it was always so confusing like wait how many fucking powers does mandarin have yeah he does fire he does ice he has force fields he can teleport he can fly he can slow down time he can open up black holes why like what yeah you know it it got ridiculous versus the movie just like you know what 
we're going to make him bracelets. We're going to give him 10 bracelets and he's going to do some pretty incredible fucking things with these bracelets. And yeah, the opening scene where he basically goes in by himself and oh, yeah. against the army. Like, like doing that, that was like the trust that I needed to be and set in the movie. That immediately. Actor, that actor who plays, like, I guess, Wen Wu. Wen Wu. Wen Wu. Oh, yeah. my God. He is a dreamboat. Is so sexy. <laughs> like, I was like, this is, the, this is great. He's was, apparently a big actor in yeah. Hong Kong or the Asian yeah. market, yeah. As, as far as I, I know. I can see why. You know, yeah. Who, Damn. One, one thing that made me sad about watching this movie was like I would have loved to have seen Robert Downey Jr. go up to this iteration of against Mandarin. this version of Mandarin. Yeah, that would have been dope. And if anything, it would have been closer, I think, to the uh, fight that he has with Vanko on the speedway in Iron oh, Man. Oh yeah, 2 with when the, he has the suitcase. Yeah, yeah, because it would be a lot of like, all right, I'm going to tie you up with these rings, and I'm going to pull you close to me, and then I'm going to you know choke you out or something well it would have been cool because i mean it one thing i really liked about this movie was uh mandarin got the thanos treatment like he's Mm. like way more rounded Mm -hmm. way more i mean he he's so for someone with immense power he's humanized Um, right and i think having the wenwu with that backstory with the kind of the backstory that tony has with with how they use their power to grapple with loss and tragedy mm-hmm. like what i think would have been interesting right that being said though i mean i i i love the rewrite for this um where it's um shang chi facing off against him because in the comics um uh shang chi's father is uh fu manchu which fu is manchu, obviously yeah. very problematic yeah uh, so yeah. this was a nice mm-hmm. yeah. cleanup well uh yeah it, it's it's I'm glad that we're at a place, especially in entertainment, where they can look into making just well-rounded three-dimensional characters and not just going off of, uh, you know, caricatures that right. are part of the reason why they even got the Fu Manchu license because it was one of the one of the few things that they were able to carry over from the previous publishing company. Right. Uh, when they were, I believe, timely, and they were just like, "Well, we got this character rolling around, and we got this new." kung fu character that we're introducing in the 70s why don't we tie that character to this one character that we have just sitting in this drawer here right you know um what they did in the movie was very smart especially with the 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 fight scene with wen wu and shang chi's mom was fantastic oh my it god was very like the like air, the tai chi air like, bending. Oh, yeah it so was very oh, yeah i was just crouching like, tiger I was like, yeah i was like i, I was, watched crouching tiger yeah, yeah. So, so dreamy. I, I was very it. into it. Well, yeah, I loved, I, yeah, I mean, I loved the, I, I loved the romantic backstory. Um, and I, yes. I dug that and I, well, and how she, it wasn't just her who had to like abandon or make the huge sacrifice for their love. Like he yeah. put his rings away and he's like, I'm going to grow old right. with this woman. Right. right. I'm right. getting at my mortality right. or immort- immortality. Yeah. Right. And it it, it, it was really farted. <laughs> it was well done. Um, now, in terms of the the other thing that my wife pointed out afterwards that I didn't even think about, the romance in the movie was really about Wen Wu and his his wife. Yeah, yeah, that was the real romance in the movie. Like yeah. the the Aquafina character and and the the main character Shang. Like they were, it was just, they were a friendship story, yeah. which is very refreshing. And also something that I don't think we've really seen in a Marvel movie, like a platonic, like guy, girl friendship. Yeah. Consistently like this, you know, like right. you can tell that they're like buds due to well, the karaoke initially, montages. You initially know? I was worried about it because um, I think that Asian male characters have a tendency to be desexualized in our right. like movies and so I was I was initially like really nervous about this like I was like okay are they do they just like desexualize one Asian male character like lead they have but then I realized I was like no his dad's a freaking fox and <laughs> we got and that yeah he, like, he wasn't desexualized not I mean, at all no. he had two kids you know yeah. um well, no, there's I, also that moment where he's in the fight club and he's shirtless and she yeah. takes a moment to like, you know, 
even though they're friends she was still I love like that. where's your shirt like, <laughs> yeah, yeah just was, like, like i don't know <laughs> right we um need to talk about his sister because oh. i have a fucking crush on oh that God. actress she yeah, that like gorgeous. that bob i was like she could kick me in the face and i would thank her <laughs> she would kick she could kick me in the face and i would jizz everywhere she yeah wow. like she she <laughs> could just like spit on me and like just stand on my face and i would just be like oh thank you so much that's that yeah. really wow oh she was she was fan- fantastic i mean a- apart from just looking incredible but i i i i really <laughs> like her story you know about uh, kind of oh, kind of feeling left in the shadows like oh i'm just gonna teach myself mm-hmm. but do it better than the boys were doing right. it damn right she did um so yeah, yeah I, really, I like, I like oh the god the the credit scene with her and mm-hmm. what oh my god for the future like it, it i want to actually see that organization show up as a problem in other movies for mm, other characters totally well in the you comics know? too chang uh shang sorry shang's sister um she's kind of like a villain in the books too or at least yeah, kind of early on in the in the, in the, in the, in the right. 70s um yeah Jailing. yeah but i love that so i love the uh you know when they go to have that fight it's in like uh it was like, it was like the golden dagger club i think mm-hmm. uh and that's referenced from um master kung fu issue 44 where that was actually one of uh fu manchu's subsidiary groups so that was kind of cool that nice. they named the um uh fight the club. fighting ring that yeah and i love this is a really cool easter egg you know when they're in the club and there's people fighting around them um mm-hmm. there is a widow uh fighting in the background and fighting this dude who's like glowing orange and and the yes. theory online is that he's one of aldrich killian's um experiments from iron man 3 that makes sense yeah he's a dude. yeah and what's cool is that yeah and we definitely know she is a um a widow because she was that that actress um was in the uh black widow, black widow movie. movie yeah actress uh, uh jay jew yeah she was in oh cool yeah so she was in the black widow movie and, she, and she's rocking Sweet. the black widow gear um nice. so loving that yeah yeah and um i gotta I say well yes i i love the movie i'll say it again <laughs> But I love how they like they got on the bus super early in the movie, and I was just like, "Oh shit, the bus shit is this early!" Mm-hmm. And then that scene just was so good. It was so the bus fantastic. scene was so good. And, and also, I was gonna say one thing: the music during that scene was yes. just this like electronic, like hip hop. It wasn't like I don't know Hans Zimmer esque. It was like right. very different, not your traditional like Marvel score. The soundtrack yeah. for the movie was actually, I thought, was very good too. Yeah, uh, a lot of good musical cues throughout the movie yeah. for sure. I uh, also mentioned too the dude on the bus who was like, "Yo, this is your boy." You know, I, was like, favorite, I took some martial my arts. My favorite and, uh, part about that scene, yeah, is that that's the dude from Homecoming. Yeah, who makes Spider Man do, do the flip. flip. Yeah, that uh, is- Zach Cherry. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, no, that if was but. I thought that was hilarious. I was like, oh, I took some martial arts when I was a kid, so I'm going to like critique. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's great. It's great. And, and he, he has a, if you've seen the show, The Magicians, he has a pretty good guest spot on that show too. That I love that actor. Yeah, uh, he's, uh, I'm okay with him being the new Stan Lee. Yeah, I'm fine <laughs> yeah, with him having up. cameos. In just all these <laughs> movies, like that guy's, yeah. you know, ridiculous vacation across the Marvel Universe would be yep. fantastic. Um, you know, one thing, um, yeah, the, the, the choreography and that was so good. Like, and I, I just, I just loved how he was kind of just using, as I've said earlier, that kind of Jackie Chan style of kind of using his environment, like using yep. his jacket, using kind of like the accordion. There was a lot thing of evading of the, moves. Yeah. It was a lot of, it, it wasn't a lot of like offensive. It was a lot of dodging and yeah. moving and that type of you know, and then when he realized, oh shit, I'm not going to be able to evade when Razorfish shows up, that's when he's like, he changes his stuff. There was a lot of things like that throughout the movie, especially in the fight scenes that I thought were, were oh, yeah. like, very well, well done. Some people online were saying that that fight on the bus is like a three act structure. Mm. Like act two yeah. is like them going into the tunnel, uh-huh. um, you know, and it's, it's, 
it's yeah when i thought about like holy shit like i didn't i didn't think of it that way when i saw it but yeah it's that a good fight scene is, it's like, a good chunk of time and yeah, you actually like, yeah. get to see stuff it's not just right. like cut 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 they actually like hold on the action well you know what i realized uh this kind of ties into what we we're talking about earlier the cinematographer for shang chi is a uh, bill pope who was the cinematographer yeah. for the matrix yeah that makes total sense I mean, he's got the background for it you know uh, it's a, no wonder it looked good shang chi the, the actor simu lu uh is it lou or lee simu i think it's simu lou um, um lou yeah oh i he, he was a stuntman as well as an actor so all this and shit, a stock photo it, model yeah which is <laughs> hilarious great, gave us great memes so far yep. but all the action like that was him like that you know you don't really see that especially in a lot of marvel productions which was refreshing for this yeah just remind me i haven't seen good like hand-to-hand combat in a movie in a long ass time like yep it's all just like superheroes punching each other but like the last time i remember seeing like a really good like martial arts movie in theaters was when i went and saw like ong bak 2 when i was in college oh my god the raid i didn't see the raid in theaters i mean i have seen those since but yeah i'm just trying to think of like a big screen like martial arts movie yeah, yeah, you know that that whole sequence on the scaffolding with the bamboo, oh, so like that was, awesome. was yeah. so stressful. Yeah, like mm-hmm. that was more stressful than the Iron Man. Um, oh, oh, was three it the, with yeah. the uh, the um airplane sequence? Was yeah, that the third? Oh, yeah, yeah, like like yeah. like like the whole barrel of monkeys. Oh my god, thing. that yes. that and that was like super stressful. But like this one was, whoa, like it it messed with me. <laughs> yeah, no, it was I mean, good. It was intense. It was good. I also loved uh, Death Dealer. Mm. I thought, I, um, I mean, I, I love the look. I just, you know, I... was Death Dealer the ninja who seemed important? Yeah, <laughs> right. and it didn't really right. kind of. That's my was, issue. With yeah, Death yeah. Dealer. he was know, very. Like, he was the Captain Phasma of this movie. Right. Basically, yeah, yeah. he looked really cool, he and he, he had like one awesome scene. Yeah, and then it was like we're just gonna have a. No, he tortured the kids. And yeah. and yeah. yeah. So but those were like in flashback, awesome right? Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. And, then well, it's you know, like, and he got his soul sucked. Yeah, that exactly. Cool. That's what I'm saying. Like he yeah. got his soul sucked, and it's but I don't know. That was that was kind of cool. Yeah. Right. Razor fist. Razor fist. Fucking razor fist. Got first off, time. a character named Razor Fist in comics is one of the stupidest. Yeah, characters of all time. Razor Fist and Taser Face. I'm smelling the team. Ex- yeah. Exactly, but I mean, he was pretty awesome. In this, like, yeah. I can't. I, I loved can't it on hand. the bus too. When as soon as that sword or like machete came out of his hand, I was just like, "Oh shit!" Yeah. Nice. It's like it's got yeah. it's getting weird fast. Yeah, as it should. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and that guy's line. He was like, "You got this, man!" And then he pops out the the machete, and he's like, "Sorry, dude." <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so good. We need to talk about that uh, abomination and Wong fight because that. Um... I think we're gonna get more information on that in She Hulk and possibly maybe even Armor Wars, but I think we won't get answers to that until Disney Plus for a while. Yeah, I mean, it definitely was like a. Um, I feel like a, a seed for something later. Yeah, uh, it was just. I mean, but it it, it kind of worked out because we get Wong popping up at the end there to kind of right, tease some more right. stuff. But the thing that the, the two takeaways from that scene that got me was one, um, we saw this in the trailer, but I loved how Abomination is looking more like his comic book iteration. Sure. Like we're getting like, yeah. you know, like the Batwing. The Finn ear. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, but the other thing that got me was when Wong calls him a meal which is the first name of Emil Blonsky, Abomination. So it's like, okay, so there's, so this isn't like a random, like, okay, right. you fight this guy. Like, like they know each other. He, there's you a know, familiarity. Exactly. Yeah. And then the scene in the locker room where he was like, I told you, you gotta like, you know, like work on your punches or throw better fake punches or something like that. And then right. he does the ring thing. And then there's like a yeah. containment unit on the there's other a side. Unit. Yeah. So yeah. Blonsky is willingly putting himself back in a position where he can be contained in house. And that might, maybe that leads into, again, a possible recruitment for Val in the future. Mm. Uh, yeah. Or, maybe, you know, something, was... 
something yeah. else going on but he was maybe that movies, was the raft yeah i mean in the comics blonsky isn't a military dude right blonsky is like another scientist or some shit right i think he's another scientist or was because yeah. that was the thing he gave himself hoax powers he fucked up his face and everything but right. he retained his intelligence mm. yeah so i'm pretty sure he's a scientist so the fact that the marvel movies kind of pivoted slightly and made him more of like a fallen line soldier leads me to think that it's again probably you know disney plus armor wars or or she hulk but mm. wouldn't surprise me if it was armor wars because that's going to start roadie and you know, you know, you know it'd be kind of cool too if there was leading up to, and I and I know I have no evidence to support this, but it'd be kind of cool if there was some sort of like a Thunderbolts thing we're getting down the road yeah, where abominations, and, you know. Yeah, I think that's where this is going. I mean, they they you know, uh, it or I've said it before. I don't necessarily think it's going to be Thunderbolts. I think it's going to be Dark Avengers. I think that's going to that. be a swerve that Marvel's going to give us. For like Avengers number six or something, it's going to be called Dark Avengers, and everybody's going to be like, "What?" Like you're going to think Hulk's on the team, it's going to be Blonsky. You're going to think it's Cap, it's going to be Walker. Yeah, you know that type of thing. Right. Um. Yeah, I'm excited just to see where it's going to go. And and it was, I thought it was a nice, um, like I said, a nice seed. It gave you just enough information to be like, because it just it wasn't just like, oh, we're going to have these two guys like fighting. It's like, oh, there's you know, right. like, like I said. Wong calling him a meal and there's a containment unit um so i thought that was um it was nice and i didn't feel like it was too distracting from the movie like wait hold up i can't watch the right, rest of this right. without knowing what's going on here um so i did appreciate that um and then what was it the next scene we have is uh you know where um his or their father catches up to them mm-hmm. and you know takes them back to his you know 10 rings hideout yeah yeah we kind of get more of um when Wu's motivation about right. um him thinking what was it, like he thought like their mom was still alive that or that her her soul was trapped in um he kept in just getting Paolo. messages Paolo. that uh yeah she was behind that door being kept captive or something by that right and tell that which which tell that gave me very much a seven seven cities of heaven Five. Mm, yeah um which you know since they they reincorporated those characters they could easily introduce iron fist and make them way better uh in, in <sighs> i was movies. thinking that would watch this like god if we could have like iron fist like this i was honestly i was thinking completely different franchise i was watching that and i was just like man that live action avatar the last airbender movie looked like trash <laughs> <laughs> yeah well i mean it wasn't it wasn't great but I, in that defense i mean it, Shyamalan made it for children and my me and my kiddo watched it and he was seven at the time and he was into it because we had just finished Avatar like for a kid's movie it's okay considering it does just basically the first season of the, the show yeah but they could have been much better uh and it's it's disappointing because just sidetracking on that the actress that they got to play Zuko's sister at the end of the movie when they like reveal it that actress is incredible on that show i mentioned earlier the magicians so oh, yeah i i think of what would have been she would have absolutely destroyed that part in the next two movies if it was you know if it ever became its own franchise so we'll so see netflix has it now we'll see what happens i'm gonna rewatch avatar again yeah but, uh, <laughs> but the, so the only thing in the entire movie that I didn't love <clears throat> was that the final bad guy wasn't his dad, wasn't the Mandarin. Like, it was just a big monster guy. Right. And I was like, yeah, I get it. It's going to show that he's strong. But I would have just loved just like a super long, just hand to hand fight with him and his dad on a cliff, just doing cool right. shit for like 15 minutes. Yeah. 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 I mean, they, they, they definitely tried to humanize the dad at the end, which mm-hmm. I think is why we didn't get that fight that you're talking about. Yeah. Because but... they wanted to emphasize the fact that it's like, you know, the last thing he did right before he died was he passed the power on to his, his son. What else yeah. is he going to do? Just be like, 
fuck you. <laughs> could have. I mean, it would have been kind of awesome, you know, if it was if it was Thanos, right, and he had the ten rings and Nebula's right there. You know, he's gonna give her the double bird and just <laughs> die with the ten rings on his arms. You know, like yeah. One it, thing about I giant monsters, have, though, yeah, I loved the design of the guardian dragon. Yes. Oh yeah, and yes. just like seeing that style dragon just like flying around and shit looked awesome. Well, the the eater of souls or whatever it was called uh, in the movie in the comics, it's basically Marvel's version of Cthulhu. Yeah, it's like a yeah. octopus thing, right? So like that's I I I agree with the design of the protector dragon. It looked awesome, but I also kind of liked the design of the soul eater dragon after i found out that it was supposed to be like cthulhu so i'm like oh yeah now it makes total sense like it looked awesome like mm-hmm. but yeah i agree it was a big just a big monster fight you know but i did appreciate the dragon ball reference that she she <laughs> dropped when she yeah, recounted the, the story at the end you know and she's like and then suddenly sean goes all kamehameha and yeah you know <laughs> uh i thought that was great um yeah, I, I thought mean, Aquafina it, was great in the whole movie. Oh my gosh. She, she I love her. Fantastic. I love her in everything she's in. I think Same. she's hilarious. And um, Nora from Queens is a great show. Yeah. From the first, like watched. from the first scene she was in, I was like, instantly it was funny. And I was like, nice. Yeah, this movie also yeah. was just, of course, it's a Marvel movie, so there's a lot of humor. But I thought the humor in this, more so than a lot of other Marvel movies, I thought hit really well for me. Agreed. Yeah. Agreed. I, I felt like it was it it let the gravitas of certain things breathe and mm-hmm. when it it was getting to be a little bit much someone would say something kind of funny or aquafina would do something kind of funny and it would lighten the mood mm-hmm. so yeah i agree i mean the 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 biggest the 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 only nitpick i guess i can think of that i have with the movie uh is more so about shang chi himself like part of what makes him so fantastic in the books and i'm just thinking more so of his iteration in the past couple of years like 15 20 years uh he is a legit hand-to-hand like encyclopedia you know what i mean like he's not the movie kind of did it somewhat like he would do different poses different forms and stuff like that but like he doesn't even have to fight you in Kung Fu. Like he could just throw hands like a boxer. Right. He could throw hands like a kickboxer or, or, or you know, a, a bare knuckle brawler. Like he, he is a master of pretty much every single form of hand-to-hand combat. And what he doesn't know, he can pick up pretty quickly with a couple of moves. The movie kind of sort of touched on it when he was fighting his aunt. And he kind of sort of quickly picked up on like, certain okay. things that he could do and he was suddenly like pushing her around but like i and maybe it's coming maybe it's coming in a future movie yeah but sequel. like when i think of shang chi like i go back to when he was on the secret avenger squad oh that was yeah and when he was on that squad there's one issue where it's steve sharon and shang chi and they have to infiltrate like a hydra base or something and yeah they have to infiltrate a hydra base and sharon and steve are off to go do something like on the higher levels but on the bottom levels like the bottom 30 levels or something all the soldiers are coming up from the bottom like to where they are and cap just looks at shang and he's like uh can you go take care of that and he's like, what do you mean take care of that? And Cap's like, incapacitate anybody that tries to get past you. And he just looks at Cap and he goes, incapacitate, affirmative. And then it's drawn by David Aha. So like the next five or six pages are just him walking down each flight of stairs and just like this double page spread of him just fucking destroying everybody. Like roundhouse kicks that collide one dude's head into another person's head and they're both knocked out you know like punching yeah. one dude in the chest and he flies and he like knocks out another two people like he really does go through incapacitating everybody and as it goes level by level by level by level like you see the bodies 
in the spread just like and at one point they have to double back and all the bodies are like still there like it's brilliant and they kind of gave it to us a little bit in the movie but there was never really a moment like i want to see him single-handedly destroy like a hundred dudes yeah because he can do that and not many people in the marvel universe can do that and he can do that without any rings without any like iron fist like that's what makes him so deadly like he he fights iron fist and he can go toe-to-toe with the dude who basically has unbreakable punches you know like there's something to be said about a dude who's just like normal but his brain works in a different way when it comes to fighting so well maybe we'll see it in future movies but other than that i loved it it was a good good start great way to introduce a new avenger you know yeah. character for for a future team up movie absolutely yeah um yeah i'm i i it can kind of reinvigorated my excitement for the next phase of movies not that black widow didn't but i think i think just seeing like a new character yeah yeah i mean um, it, it's you know black widow every time i think about black widow it's just it's a vegetarian restaurant man there's no steaks <laughs> This yeah. no stakes. This movie, in hindsight, made and to me made Black Widow so much lesser of a movie. Even I didn't yeah. love that movie, and we talked about it. But it's yeah. like, this is a goddamn movie. <laughs> yeah, this it is a well like, done movie. Yeah, it's like I yeah. loved all the characters. The set pieces were great and like made sense, at least in the world. Where it's just like I think about the end of Black Widow, and I'm just like, what the hell is even going on? Why are they just jumping from debris piece to debris piece? Like, how long can you possibly be in free fall? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Also, like, I'm sure 90% of this was shot on a green screen, but this also didn't, it didn't feel as fake as a lot of the other war, like, places in the Marvel universe. Yeah. Which is, um, yeah. And that's another, funny, another thing I'm excited for about the Eternals, because I know um, Chloe Zhao, I think there's a director, yeah. um, she, like, insisted on like filming on locations for stuff real sets yeah and i'm just like thank god (laughs) it'll well the the uh cinematographer for that movie is supposed to be incredible too i forget the the eternals looks done but yeah me and paul were talking about that newest trailer last time but yeah actually seeing it all in action and stuff but it's just like what's great about that newest trailer is basically kevin feige was like you know what pc i'm gonna show you how to do superman correctly and yeah. we're just going to put him in this trailer and those laser beams out of the eyeballs look yeah. sick. Yeah. So I'm very excited for Eternals. Uh, one thing I wanted to mention before getting off um, Shang-Chi was that I feel like we really need to discuss Trevor Slattery. And uh, oh, that was, a, that was great. It was yeah. a great. That was the biggest surprise circle. to me in the whole movie. <laughs> Yeah, I just thought that was uh, because ever since that 2014 Marvel one shot, All Hail the King, you know, where Marvel kind of confirmed that there was, in fact, an actual Mandarin out there. Like, I always want to know, like, well, what happened to him? And uh, I like that he touched on it. You know, like, oh, you know, his men came to get me. I was going to kill me. And, you know, and then he did some King Lear. And, you know, now he's like his personal jester. Um, right. I Which loved I thought it. was it, hilarious. My God, I am also okay with future, you know, Ben Kingsley cameos moving forward. <laughs> um, yes, yeah, even when he's talking it. about seeing Planet of the Apes is oh God, so dumb so and good. so it's hilarious. So, it's so brilliant. It's yeah. it, you know, I looked at my mother and I was like, "How are they? How are <laughs> they riding on the horses?" And she looked at me and she said, "It's acting." And then I thought the apes were acting. It's incredible. I still can't get my mind around it. Like it's so good. It, yeah, yeah. That was his his whole thing with uh, Morris. How he's only able to understand Morris and talk to him. Yeah, that was fantastic. The whole like, oh, you can stay in the too. pocket. Stay in the pocket. What does that mean? Stay in the pocket. Yeah, like it was good. It was good. I'm glad that he, he was came, in it longer than I thought back. he would be. Yeah. He played yeah. a pretty big part in that. Yeah, like, he's a pretty like, crucial yeah. part. Yeah. Yeah, he did. He really did. He got He's them. like in That's like true. all of the third act. Uh yeah. yeah, but like yeah, when he went 
you know, and I love that he like became like like almost like a, a citizen with those people, like wearing their clothes. I love when he was, you know, pretending to be dead. And then yeah. Morris joined him. Yep. Yep. It was good. It was just nice. It was I love when Marvel does that. It's kind of like um the way they brought back Red Skulls. Like you always wanted to know what happened to that guy, and then they bring him back in a really meaningful way. Um, right. And uh oh, I loved it. Yeah, and I thought it was, was good. a good, good kind of redemption for him too. Um, yeah, I mean, he's just an actor. He's just an actor, man. He's not. He's not well, trying to. He's not trying to do horrible things. Yeah, okay? he's well, just an actor. Well, what I love too Playing is that I love how he's so dumb, but like he's actually like in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Like he's actually like up until the whole Mandarin thing, he's actually a, a pretty. He was like pretty well respected. Like you know, uh, Karen Gillian or. Um, What's his face there from a uh, guy Pierce and Iron Man three really talks about how you know how 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 like how you know talented he was on stage with his King Lear and mm-hmm. you know and he was just a druggie. Yeah, yeah. He just liked to party. Lights and <laughs> he just yeah. He has too much fun, that Trevor. Yeah, I actually rewatched All Hail the King today. It's on uh, Disney yeah. Plus. We rewatched it the other day before uh, we saw this. It's so I had good. a feeling he was going to show up. It's so good. Um, yeah, it's fun. Where's, where's my chalky milk? <laughs> uh, it's good. Marvel it needs good. to do more Marvel one shots because um, those are fun. Those they're are fun, fun, and I and they they fill in the gaps. You know, yeah. like it, you know, it doesn't have to be like a huge deal. Uh, you know, it's just like just enough to. And they have the perfect perfect platform for it now too, and they're releasing them on Disney Plus. So I wonder if. At some point, because Disney Plus has so many just shorts. Like yeah. I, I've spent so much time of my day watching like Pixar shorts and shit, mm-hmm. with Max and stuff, and it's just like, give me all the Marvel shorts. Let's, yeah, for real. I mean, God, I Disney, if you're listening, and I know you're not, I have drafts of like script ideas for one shots, like stuff that I would like to see, something that's not big budget. You know, maybe a green screen or two, and that's it. Just like some simple stuff that I just think would be kind of nice to fill in in between movies. You know, this is my only problem with the Marvel stuff is that I feel like they, like you kind of get these big jumps. You know, of uh, you know, like oh no, you destroyed the Bifrost, right. and like oh father, how much dark magic did he you know summon? It's like oh wait, what? Or like right. Hydra infiltrated Shield, and Age of Ultron comes around, and it's like we fixed it. It's like right really? like right. i feel like some things have big you know repercussions and then it's wrapped up in a prologue pretty much you know yeah. that has to be a whole mini series but you right. know imagine like a scene between like tony stark and like cats of america like oof man shield that that, that was a bummer huh i must right. have just uh yeah we fired 85 percent of the workforce yeah <laughs> just couldn't trust anybody even people yeah that were right. late, i mean just, you know like they just... were hydra we just got rid of them all in one fell swoop yeah, I was like, yeah. you know, Tony, I could have used your help. Like, uh, did you guys see uh, my home fucking sink into the ocean? <laughs> like, I was kind of no, busy. No, Tony, I wasn't paying attention to that because <laughs> I was too busy dealing with the fact that janitors were now suddenly majors yeah. in, uh, you know, S.H.I.E.L.D. in the whole hierarchy, okay? Yeah. So, like, yeah, I would have just loved for stuff like that, you know, or like, you know, Thor when he decides to stay on Earth, you know, just right. kind of some of the well, other he misadventures has, we, he has. Mm-hmm. We, we know he has his roommate, Dennis. Yeah, he hangs out. He hangs out at his roommate's house. Like and, I would have uh, loved, you know. That's all I'm saying. Like I would yeah. live for that kind of thing. Like I said, not big budget stuff. No, you know, no. just uh, simple stuff. Yeah, yeah. It does it. It doesn't cost any budget to put Hemsworth in the costume and just have him sit on a couch. You you could get right. you could milk five six minutes out of that. Yeah. Uh, all easy easy. Yeah, so, just, you know, just kind of clear up some loose. You know, right. like I like there's the, the one they did like uh, where uh, it's Phil Coulson talking to uh, Stillwell, and they're actually they're kind of, they're act, they're actively retconning the Incredible Hulk post credit scene because that post credit scene makes no sense now. Like what? when 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 Tony w- walks into the bar and he sees Thaddeus Ross and uh-huh. he's like, "Oh, I told you that serum was put on ice for a reason," and he's like, "Oh, we're we're building a team," it, you know. And then right. you know the Avengers storyline didn't quite pan out that way, and so right. Um, what uh colson and stillwell decide to do is that they because ross was breathing up their you know down their necks about getting involved 
more with shield and the avenger initiative so they right. decide to send tony to piss off ross to not want to be involved in the avenger initiative and that's what that whole scene was like it, it the one shot is like oh I is, gotcha. is, that makes sense yeah that's colson is still well talking then right. it's that scene and then it's like right. oh that worked out because ross wants something to do with us now because he can't stand yeah. stark you know and that's then it fits great. with the yeah. continuity of the other movies you know yeah, yeah. Like stuff like that yeah. like yeah. that couldn't have cost that because it's literally yeah. colson and still well sitting in a diner that's pretty funny and you're yeah. clearing up a major plot hole yeah mm-hmm. that's true that's a good that's a good point yeah you know? That's awesome. Yeah. That's funny. Wow. Good stuff. Yeah. So Marvel, give Paul a call. He has a bunch of one shots. Ready <laughs> Better call go. Paul. Better call Paul. Seriously. Exactly. Um, Better call Paul, y'all. <laughs> I can do this all day. Exactly. <laughs> but yeah, but all in all, Shang Chi, I was really impressed with, and I'm and I'm just excited for what's to come. And I loved the post credit scene where you know Wong shows up in the restaurant. And yep. they, you know, talk about the rings. And I, I, I thought it was so cool to see uh, Captain Marvel there. Um, yeah. And I thought it was cool to see. Well, I thought it was cool because anything I didn't expect and I see it, I'm like, oh, that's cool. Uh, right. Automatically, you know. And I thought it was right. interesting to see Bruce Banner and Bruce Banner not a smart Hulk anymore. Right. That was arm still in a sling. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so maybe that's going to be discussed more in She-Hulk because I, because he's supposed to be in that, right? Yeah. Like, uh, so maybe, yep. maybe there's a reason why he's not smart Hulk. At all. I don't know. Yeah, but I'm, I'm pretty sure they'll discuss it in like the first five minutes of She Hulk, just so everybody will watch the show without thinking about it. Like, right. like, because that would be a very Marvel thing to do. Like, everybody's like, oh, it's this big mystery. And like, Marvel, like, it, it becomes an exposition dub in the first two minutes of the episode. Right. And Marvel's like, yeah. Oh, how much, how much, yeah. Uh, yeah, how much dark matter did Father conjure to make you human again? <laughs> exactly. Right. It'd be some, <laughs> something ridiculous, you know? Yeah. Like, you, you took how much game out of your body? Like, right. You know, so. Um, but I thought that was cool though. Like, you know, I, and I like that, that line. He says, go like a welcome to the freak show or welcome to the circus. Welcome to the circus. Yeah. Yeah. yeah the um, unofficial, you know, invite into, well, now that we have you, we got you on a roll of decks. We'll call you when we need you. Right. Yeah. Um, and I love that, you know, Captain Marvel, who's kind of like their liaison for space, no record of what the rings are. Um, yep. And Wong, he said nothing in our codex. So, and, and then there's like a, like a it's, beacon. It's not magic. Yeah. It's like it's a, not. It's yeah. not science fictiony. It's something older than that. Yeah, and that there's like from that beacon that saying. like that that signal kind of coming from the, from the rings, which you know, yeah. I mean, at this point, literally could be any fucking thing. It, you know what I mean? It could be. Who knows? Maybe maybe it ties to Wandavision. Or in the multiverse of madness, or maybe none of those things. Or Eternals, maybe it ends up being old? one of those. Maybe it could be. The, I thought maybe the Eternals, but it might be. I think maybe it's something else. Yeah, I feel like the Eternals like, being the next movie, it's too close of a jump. Well, right. plus two in the original release schedule, we would have already had Eternals by now. Right. Right. So that's the other thing too. Is like it's kind of hard to figure out what's leading up to what because the original schedule is kind of shifted so much, right? Thanks to COVID. Um, so who knows? Like I said, I mean, it could be it could be tying to what we already know, or a threat. You know, maybe it has nothing, maybe it has nothing to do with Kang. For all we know, that could be fucking I don't know Galactus or Xavier. I don't know. Yeah, spitballing. Um, so we know Fantastic Four is coming. If it was something like Galactus, like if if that going off is what alerted Galactus to the fact that there's something on Earth that he might want to eat, and he's like, "Yo, surfer, check it out." Exactly. Tell me how the menu looks. Do they deliver? That would be incredible. That would be awesome, because then you could do Fantastic Four versus the Surfer in their debut movie, yeah. and end it with Galactus showing up, and that's the new that's the Avengers team up for the next phase or something you know? right yeah like it's kang then galactus or right. who knows and that's the great thing about marvel it, there's so many possibilities it, it's like you, there's so many characters there's so many avenues you can go down um and that's what i miss i mean because i mean i mean i love going to a marvel movie to, to see the marvel movie but also it's like i want to see the setup like i want to see what's coming next i want the tease mm-hmm. well it left us with a lot of questions yeah interesting and i also credit scenes and yeah i also did like them going to karaoke with Wong. that mm-hmm. was spot on 
because Wong Wong is a dude who likes to hang out. I like Wong a lot. Wong is yeah. kind of climbing out to be one of my favorite MCU characters. Yeah, and, and again, I'm glad somebody that else. Him more. Yes, and somebody else who has benefited from the Marvel movies where he's just not some manservant. Like he is. Yes, totally. He's, he's like he's uh, he exactly. He's another right. sorcerer. Like he's right. right. On the he's, same level as, at least well, for now, anyway. He's he's more on the level that like he's still able to give Stephen Strange advice. And shit. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And mm-hmm. and get the man to buy him food. Right. Because you know he only has like two hundred rupees or something. Right. Which is like not great. It's like a buck twenty five. Yeah. Fucking it, yeah, yeah. One of my favorite, one of my favorite scenes in uh, Infinity War. Yeah, um, that whole sequence is great. Yeah. Uh, so all in all, I think that's. Um, I mean, I still need to see it again, but I know for me, Shanks, it, it's a solid A, A minus A plus. I don't know yet, but it's 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 definitely got an A for me at this point, because of just of the because I and mean, my grading system is pretty simple. Did at did at any point in time did I become aware I was watching a movie? No. Okay. Like you know what I mean? Like if because if, if you make me aware I'm watching a movie, you have failed as a storyteller and a lot of demerits. But I you know I had fun. Um, like I said, the only time I got knocked out of move out of the movie was because Angela was so in it. You know, okay. <laughs> like she you know she was so invested, uh, and that's why she's so great to go to go to a movie with. Um, but um, yeah. I'm with you. I mean, it's a solid. It's definitely a solid A for sure. Yeah, uh, I'm not saying it's the best MCU movie. I'm, I'm, not, there's I'm just saying it's strong. There's 25 Marvel movies. I put it at number 12, so it's it's better than the top half. It like it's in the. It's in I the think top that's a half. fair ranking. I think yeah. I think maybe me, top, it's definitely top 10. I think at the moment I need to rewatch it, but and yeah. I have to maybe on a rewatch it'll it'll go into the top 10 because it's sitting at 12, but. It's it has it has, you know, the next two are kind of, uh, you know, is it better than the first Avenger for me? Better than that first cat movie? I don't know. I'd have to watch it again. The cat is movies it, are all in my like top five. I'm, is it I'm is it better than movies. is it better than the first Ant-Man for me? I don't know. I'd have to rewatch it. To yeah, me, like, it you know, I, I that first Ant-Man is very underrated. I would say I, I love that movie, but I, I, I enjoy it. This very movie, much, I was, but, yeah. I was definitely. Yeah, I mean, like, I, I, I remember I, leaving Ant Man being like, "That was a good movie." I remember leaving this movie being like, "Damn, like it like okay. hit harder for me." Okay, okay. Well, I'm definitely gonna rewatch Shang for sure as soon as I can because it was. But I mean, like again, like my least favorite Marvel movie is like a B minus. C yes yeah, yeah so it's that's, like that's what i would even the movies that i have ranked at the bottom like i would still get, say that they're like b yeah b minus c like plus. thor yeah, dark c world range. was a competently made movie i just yeah. don't care to ever watch it again <laughs> yeah see i i put that at, like it's towards the bottom of my list too and i i feel the same way like it's it has fun moments in it you know but there are better thor movies that i would I would watch. Mm-hmm. You know what's great about about the Marvel movies too is how in make in having more entries, it improves the quality of some of the lesser films. Like because of like Endgame, um, it makes you kind of pay attention more to Dark World. Like Dark World is, is right. has become more Im- Im- important, and I think with as a result and, of yeah, yeah, I'm and I you. think and I yeah. I like that they do that, and I think that's kind of what's happening with when they reintroduce like Ross and Blonsky, it's like, it's, it's making people take another look at the Hulk again, you know, and because Hulk, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I, um, I, I think it's cool when you can have a franchise do that where, you know, where it's like, okay, so, I mean, not the greatest, but it had, it's set up a lot of, you know, let's say the way people talk about age of Ultron, like, I think Ultron is underrated and, 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 yeah. and, and that movie, like, because of films that came after it, you know, I, I think people forget how much that set up. You know, with like Wanda and the, you know the, the Sokovia Accords. Um, well, it's totally important now, but it, right. but it again, as other movies came out, it made the the events of that movie mean more, which then lifted up the quality of the movies around that release yeah. for sure. Yeah, totally. Uh, and even even WandaVision a couple months ago, uh, after we had all seen it, uh, I had gone back and rewatched 
Age of Ultron, and it was a better movie having seen WandaVision. It became a better movie because I was paying attention to different things and right. reading more and picking up things that I just didn't see the first time around. So yeah, yeah for sure. I would I would say so. Yeah. Yeah. Good stuff all around. So yeah, clearly we hated Shang Chi. Um uh no, I mean it was uh yeah, I'm very happy and I'm I'm so excited that we get four movies this year so we got two down and then we got eternals and spider-man um yep Yep. can't wait but uh in the meantime what's holding you guys over what have you been what have you been reading watching playing not playing i've randomly i got super into boom studios go go power rangers comic book Dope. I think you told um, me that you started reading that last I time. I started reading it last time. I was like three issues in. Now I'm like 23 issues in. Nice. Yeah. And <laughs> well, the last time I talked to you, you were like, I don't know how I feel about this. So like consistently it has great art and like Power Rangers design stuff that just like the Megazord, that shit looks rad, especially when yeah. like drawn well. Um, oh, yeah. It basically just kind of fills out. It's like the comic book is what the show is in my memory i have gone back and watched some of the old power rangers and that shit sucks it is so yeah. goofy so yep. corny but like when i was a kid that shit was the best it was, it was fire yeah and yeah, so the comic book it's just like like the action and just like it fills out the lore a lot more and stuff like that and it's like reading comic book now is like how i felt as a kid watching the show so it's like a mix of it's a it's a solid ass comic book but also Sweet. the nostalgia mixed with that. And I know Boom has a bunch of other, maybe not a bunch, at least two other Power Rangers comics. And I think the one I'm reading ended and it was kind of a prequel to the mainline one. Sweet. So I'll probably jump into, I think Mighty Morphin Power Rangers is like the main one. The main one. And okay. this is Go-Go Power Rangers. Dope. But yeah, it's, it's really, I like it, you know? Nice. You got your, your nice. classic I'm team. Excited. Um. I'm like 20 something issues into it. It's just when Rita goes to get the uh the dragon coin to create a red green ranger. And I'm like, yes. I know all these things from being yes. a child. And it's nice. It's exciting. I enjoyed that Power Rangers movie when it came out a couple of years ago. I, I never really saw it. Oh, that was I good. Wanted that, to see it never... that was very underrated. I own it. It's that's how much yeah, I liked it. Same. Like it's a very solid movie. And in terms of updating a lot of the tropes from the tv show for a like film medium Mm -hmm. they they were very smart with what they how they changed things um and it was very cool the stuff with rita and zordon and all of that uh it was just cool and elizabeth banks is having fun playing rita and yeah she's good in it totally enjoyable like it's the right amount of cheese with the right amount of camp and yeah i need to watch yeah. that at some point it's, and, it's uh, good what it's was it solid. brian cranston as um as zordon. zordon yeah and bill Hader as alpha five yeah so it was good that pretty, was really pretty, good pretty awesome i'm yeah. surprised that i'm not i mean I, i'm not surprised i was disappointed that uh we didn't get a sequel because there was tease Same. they kind of teased the green they um, tease they tease something yeah at the end so yeah Get, Rob, get on that, especially. If I will. I'll check it out. If you're on that kick, you'll probably you'll definitely probably on a Power it. Rangers kick right now. Yeah, yeah you'll uh, enjoy awesome. it. But yeah, go go Power Rangers. <clears throat> I can recommend. It is good. I've read nothing else in the Boom Blind, and it all makes sense. It's, you can just read that one. But nice. Cool. Word. How about you? Want anything? Anything on your agenda or plate? Um. Well, I I recently there was like a limited series that came out on Netflix. And it's like kind of horror noir type genre. It's hard to describe, but it takes place in LA in the 90s. It's called Brand New Cherry Flavor. Uh, Interesting. And Let's check it out. The, the lead actress is uh, the girl who played uh, Battle Angel Alita. Oh, okay. In the Robert yeah. movie. So she's like this film director who comes to LA in the 90s. And it's, it's it feels like David Lynch wrote the script and then tarantino directed it whoa it's very weird like it's a lot of mishmash of different genres but horror is definitely i guess where it goes to the most i liked it uh 
but it's very bizarre. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so I, I, I hate to be as vague about it, but I can't really talk about it without kind of ruining things that happen early on. Okay. I will say it's, again, it, it has a certain feel. Like, it, it feels very, like, lost highway by way of, like, pulp fiction, almost. Interesting. Catherine Keener's in it. She's pretty fantastic in it. Uh, yeah, so if you get a chance, it's only eight episodes, and it's self-contained. Okay. I don't think there's going to be any more. It's just a limited series, so wow. brand new cherry flavor. Brand new. All right, I'm write that down. Brand new cherry flavor. Yeah, I'm trying to think what I've been. Um, I mean, I started watching the new season of American Horror Story. American uh, Horror Story, this, I've, I've had a really hard time with. There's like probably this, been about one. This season once. sucks, man. This season yeah, sucks. you're watching it with, with, it with the writers I've, in P Town. I've I've watched every single season, and some seasons vary in quality over the others. Yeah. Uh, I think season two is a masterpiece. I don't think they've come close to hitting anything as good as they did with Asylum. You know what's um, funny? I was telling this to Angela today that like my very first introduction to um. American Horror Story was somewhere, I think maybe the middle or the end of season two, where um, was it Evan Peters? He comes in and he says something because it's set in New England, right? He's like, Oh, we gotta go down to the commons and organize a match. I'm like, Oh, right. oh my God, what <laughs> right. is that? Is his accent? Is that the, the monster of this season? Holy shit. Um, so, but, um, but I, I re I kind of watched them all from the beginning and, um, I liked Roanoke. I think Roanoke was the one that I Roanoke I, kind of... I, I enjoyed very much because I was very much into the IDTV shows. Yeah. And what it was spoofing was spot on. So good. Yeah. Um, but I think part of what part of why season two is so well done is because the the villains that it worked on in different periods, mm. all culminating to that final episode, that yeah. final reveal. Uh, and Sarah Paulson's incredible. I love Sarah season. Paulson. She is fantastic in that season. Yeah. Uh, which is why it's so disappointing that like in this season, she's just kind of meh. Uh, yeah. And it, in addition to that, in the, in the American <sighs> crime story impeachment, she's playing Linda Tripp. And again, it's just Sarah Paulson. Yeah. You can, you're, you're a better actress than the caricatures you, you're doing yeah. right now. Yeah. Um, um, so yeah, this season sucks this yeah uh, um, ha- it, it's i was into yeah. the shorts but even then i only liked two out of the six yeah. shorts that they did the the rest were you know garbage so yeah. well good yeah. i'm glad it's not just me no nope, um, not just you man yeah um i will say though uh this new season of what we do in the shadows I haven't watched it yet oh Ready my to, to collect some more episodes God. before we dive in but Oh, wait, yeah, have you I'm not sure. watched the show at all? Or just... I've seen, I'm, I'm all caught up on the last okay. season. I just haven't watched anything. Like this. That show is fantastic. Like that's great. a show. What's great about what we do in the shadows is, you know, I couldn't wait for the next episode. So I just started rewatching it from the beginning. I fucking still laugh my ass off. Like yeah, it's the first it's time so I saw it. Um, it's just, and I loved the movie. Um, and uh, yeah, this season is, um, yeah, it's, it's phenomenal. Jackie you know. Daytona. Oh my god, that's definitely probably one of my funny. favorite episodes <laughs> of theirs. Funny. It's so good. Um, yeah, no, but that's been really good. Um, yeah, I can't think of anything else uh, other than I'm super excited that you know I got my special delivery today. This thing is a monster. Super dope. Yeah. Um, super dope. Yeah, and it's like, oh, it's like a my buddy. I'm like, it is. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, very very happy with it. Um, it's uh i still Did don't sentinel understand. have a name in that comic sentinel or was it just called sentinel do you remember i don't do you remember the the, the what i'm talking about rob I do. back in the um, like early 2000s was it like a, they, a girl who was friends with a sentinel or something it was like a little kid yeah it was like a little manga line that they produced okay i don't know if i read released. that i remember when they had the manga wave yeah well they they did after that they decided to do like a couple of like 
original digest in that same size and they did various concepts and one of them was like this kid who basically finds a sentinel in a junkyard and yeah, he like I, I remember puts it back it, together again and it's kind of like iron gianty but i can't remember if the sentinel had a name or if he just called it sentinel he later went on to join the avengers initiative because he was able to control the sentinel they let him on the avengers initiative campus and whatnot but i still don't remember so yeah wasn't that good um yeah yeah i can't uh can't really remember it i um and i'm still reading all of the x-men stuff like i told you guys at front start from 1963 moving on i just got to the matt fraction x-men Fun. stuff you know where they go, to, they go to they california. go to california this go yeah yep. yeah yeah i just finished the brew baker arc where um what was it uh, son of Matt or daughter of mastermind? Um, you know, uh, making the sixties come alive again. Yep, it was a choice. Yeah, it was it wasn't the worst X Men story I read? You know, no, when you have Greg Land on the art, you kind of got to tailor your story to fit <laughs> what he's gonna do best. So yeah, you'd have three women with their mouths open. Yep, at the front of them. and like no and no hips. <laughs> yeah. Yep. So. Um. But yeah. That's been fun. Um, but yeah, other than that, that's it. I, I feel like this week's just kind of been a blur. Um, I'm sure I'll have more recommendations next time. But I will say, I will recommend... Um, oh, yeah, House of Leaves. I finished that. Holy shit. If you guys haven't read House of Leaves... Dope. Good stuff. Okay. Fuck with my brain. But good stuff. Uh, but yeah, uh, other recommendation. I recommend you giving us some stars on iTunes. You know, recommend yes. giving us some love, giving us some feedback. It'll help um, the absolutely. Yep. Because I, I can't do it alone, guys. <laughs> can't do it alone. So yeah, so definitely jump on iTunes, give us some some stars, and uh, yeah, have fun. It's boring and more.